Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us in today's story. Today's story is going to be about the bad omens and superstitions regarding birds and snakes. The older generations always had a superstitious belief that if a snake or a bird was to enter your house, then it can mean that someone inside the house may pass. For this instance, the birds and the snake. Snakes never entered the house, but they were around the house. My mom just recently passed, and we just finished up the funeral. We set up arrangements to have my master come back and reopen my altar, as well as sweep out all the bad energy that was left behind. When a close family member passes away, any shamans in the household must have their altar covered so that their guides or koning do not follow the dead. It is also required that once the funeral is completed, a ceremonial ritual is required to sweep out all the negative energy or bad juju. We flew my master in as we were prepping. The morning of the ritual, there was a garter snake next to my mom's plants. My shaman brothers and sisters flew in as well. We all thought it was strange to see a snake before the ceremony began. One of the shaman sister spoke to the snake and told him to leave. The following week, we prepared everything and scheduled a spirit release, or what we Hmong people call chopli. This process is completed so that the spirit of the person who passed on can go and reincarnate. For those who don't know already, the Hmong culture believe that we each have three spirits: one. Stays with the body at the cemetery. Two, stays at home with the siga, and becomes a part of our house guardians. And the last and final one goes and reincarnate. We planned on doing my grandma and my mom's spirit release together. Keep in mind that they do not get along when they were alive. For those who would like a backstory, please go back and listen to the other story. I'll provide a link in the description below. So we planned everything and prepped everything so that we can do both the spirit release at the same time. The day before the spirit release, there were two snakes that came into my backyard. I started talking to them in the tongue language, or what we Hmong or some shamans call mashwa. I asked why were they here, and they told me that they were just here resting and would leave as soon as they finished resting. I told them that. This is my house and not a place for them to rest. If they don't leave, and we see them again, if they were to get killed from that, there would be no penalty since we gave them a fair warning already. We lived in the house for two years and have never seen any snakes snakes prior to this. That following night, my uncle drove in from out of town, and my dad and my uncle got into a big argument and decided to cancel my grandma's spirit release. It seems like the whole mess could have been、uh, my mom's way of telling us that she didn't want their spirit release to be held at the same time, since they did not get along when they were alive. I gave my guides and the、uh, siga a heads up that there will be shoking shundo or like drums and bang sounds in the house tomorrow. So if, if they hear these sounds, then for them not to get scared. The following day, we proceeded as planned and finished my mom's spirit release, but we never followed through with my grandma's. The day after the spirit release, I had to do a ritual to sweep away the sounds of the drums and the thing. As I finished my sessions, I decided to take a walk back into the、uh, backyard, and、uh, I turned around the corner and saw five snakes bundled up in a group laying on the concrete sidewalk. As soon as they saw me, they got startled and slithered off. The way I saw these snakes was that they were relatives and knew that when we did the spirit release, they would come gather around to eat and visit. For the next two weeks, my dad continued being the only one who saw snakes. These occurrences of snakes so often bothered me, and I found out that it was kind of odd. So I decided. To look into it to find out why they kept coming up, 
I ended, I ended up doing a session and as soon as I finished my chants, my grandma popped out. She wasn't very happy and said, Why haven't, why haven't they re uh, released my spirit yet? Don't they know that me and your grandpa are trying to get reborn? How long are they going to wait for? I then responded and told her that her sons, who are my dad and uncle, just aren't ready yet. When they are ready, then they'll prepare everything and get it finished. One day I was sitting at the dining table and my dad came by and sat down next to me. He seemed bothered by something, but it was always awkward for him to ask me for spiritual help. He ended up asking me why he kept seeing snakes. He assumed that uh, it was because they didn't do the spirit release for my grandma. I just looked at him and laughed and said, Yes, you should already know why. That's exactly why you keep seeing snakes. He felt a little ashamed and walked off afterwards. Another two weeks passed and I hear, a, I hear a loud thump on the window as if someone threw a rock. I walked into the living room and my son started screaming. Dad, a black bird just flew into the window and died. This window that the black bird flew into was located under a covered patio. So that wasn't typically a route that birds would fly, fly into. Birds would have no reason to fly directly into a window, especially if it was under a stuccoed patio. My dad happened to be in the living room at that time and went outside to sweep and toss the black bird away. I was bothered by these strange occurrences that kept coming up over and over again. First it was snakes, now it's a bird that ran to the window and died on the spot. As soon as I finished my shaman chants, my grandma popped out again. My grandma wanted for her sons to complete her spirit release. My dad and my uncle didn't get along, so they refused. Each of them was just as stubborn and wanted to do things their way or refused to participate at all. All the grandkids tried talking to them, to both sons, but they remained stubborn and unwilling to negotiate the terms. The grandkids was willing to cover all the costs for the spirit release, but both sons still refused. This time was around the fifth and sixth time that I spoke with my grandma since, uh, since her passing. I told my grandma to do whatever it takes to get their attention, as long as she doesn't go to the extent of taking their spirit with her then I won't, get, I won't get involved. She's been telling both sons in their dreams, sending all kind of messages, but they still choose to ignore her. She's been nice this whole time and it got nowhere. So I told her to use whatever uh, force necessary to get their attention. She finally agreed and left. The following day, my dad asked me to look into the black bird of why it suddenly died. As soon as I finished my chance again, my grandma popped out. This time there was so much sadness when she came. My voice began to switch as if someone was blocking my airway. My grandma cried and said that she raised them with blood, sweat, and tears. And now that all their kids have it good now, they forgot who raised them. She cried quite heavily and this is what she said in Hmong. I told her that because we all were the kids of her sons, there's no way that we could be able to convince them, especially if they're the parents and they can't even convince their kid. We tried two times. To do a spirit release. We tried two times to do the spirit release as the on the grandkids behalf but each time my dad or my uncle will always have issues and prevent it from happening. So I reminded my grandma that she's the mom and she's like the world. She's the mom and gives unconditional love to her kids and for her to continue protecting her sons even though they may not be the best. So, the original content was in Hmong, so I'm gonna say it in Hmong. So, I'm gonna say it in Hmong. 
ตุนเนียนิซิตาลิลุนดูเอนิซิลุนิจอมิตุมิญัวเอนิซิวะกาวนองเจอเลยเทตุเลกะเลลอเอจอยเลวอจิจิตองยะลินิเชสซาลอก